Well, I've used a lot of different digital night vision over the years. One of the most frequently asked questions, which one's best? Now, I rarely shy away from giving my opinion, but it's really hard for me to determine which one is best for you. When you say best, you might be meaning the absolute best price, which one is the absolute cheapest, that's the one you think's best. Or maybe you're more interested in the night vision. How far will they actually reach out at night and be able to light it up and see different objects? Or maybe you're most interested in image quality. How about daytime and nighttime image and videos? Which one's the absolute best? Well, what I can do is compare these side by side. I can put all four makes and models up against each other from the exact same location in the exact same conditions, both daytime and night. And when I'm done comparing, hopefully you can make a sound decision for yourself, which one you think is best for you. So that is today's plan. We're gonna be directly comparing four different digital night visions. So let's get right into it. And first we're gonna explain what is a digital night vision. These units here are advertised either as binoculars or monoculars. Uh, those are the two different types that digital night vision is advertised as. Uh, overall, they function virtually identical. Uh, the binoculars would have a full screen in the back that you would use both your eyes to look at that screen, whereas the monoculars uh, just has a place for your one eye to look at the screen. All of these units, whether it's binocular or monocular, uh, use a camera. You're not physically looking through a lens. Uh, it's using a camera to capture what the camera is seeing and then it's displaying it on a screen. For the night vision, they all give out an IR light. Uh, that's infrared light is displayed and that lights up uh, when you're in the dark and then the camera can pick up anything that's lit up with that IR light. Uh, so these digital night visions, you're not physically looking through a lens like you would on a spotting scope or maybe real binoculars. Instead, this unit is capturing an image uh, with a camera and software and it's displaying it on a digital screen. That's how all digital night vision works. Uh, it makes it a pretty cheap option comparatively uh, to using thermal or some other way. Uh, the IR illuminator, the infrared, can submit uh, a light that the camera then can pick up. Now all of these units also work in the daytime. They are capable of taking color, photos, and videos. Another thing to note with these digital night visions, you do not have to take photos or videos. You can simply use them as a viewer. Now I like the option of videoing what I see and you can capture that and share it with family and friends. It stores it on an internal SD card on all of these units but you do not have to be taking a video or taking photos in order for these to work. You do, however, have to have them powered up. Each one of these units take batteries, some different sizes, some different amounts, and we'll get into that as we directly compare them in just a bit. But these units do take batteries. You have to have it powered up in order for that camera to work and for it to display on the screen. So that's a brief overview of what digital night vision is. Take a closer look at each one of these, see what the similarities and the differences are between each of these. So we're gonna start over here with the Creative XP. This is their Glass Owl Elite model. This is their top of the line. And although this is considered a budget-friendly digital night vision, this is the most expensive. It comes in currently, as I tape this, at $349. But relatively speaking, that is still a budget-friendly option compared to thermal or other night vision options. So this is $349, and again, it's their Elite model. Uh, it comes with a three and a half inch digital display back here. Uh, this unit also has a 5X, a five power optical lens, and it also gives you the option to digitally zoom. This unit also comes with a 128 gig micro SD card that's already installed, and it also runs on a rechargeable battery. The battery is size 18650, and again, that comes with the unit, makes it uh, that you can recharge this battery and continue to use it. So this is the Creative XP Elite model. So this next unit is a Dassun, and this is a digital night vision. It has a 2.31 inch screen, and then it has a bit of a magnifier on there that increases it to a three inch viewing screen. Uh, this unit right now comes in at $135. So comparatively, it's a good bit cheaper than that first Elite model we just looked at. Uh, this has an optical lens. 
of three power, and it also gives you the option to digitally zoom in for power. This unit, you must install your own batteries. It takes AA batteries and it takes six of them. So again, you have the possibility you could use rechargeable batteries. I have lithium ions in it now, but you have to install your own six AA batteries in order to operate this. Now this one has an 850 IR illuminator. That's 850 NM uh, light spectrum. And that's the same as the unit before here. Uh, so this is the Dasun Digital Night Vision. So the next unit is a digital night vision and it is considered a monocular. This is from Best Garter and it has a Wi-Fi option. Now because it's a monocular, it only has a one and a half inch digital screen meant to look at with just your one eye. It does have six power optical lens and it also gives you the option to digitally enhance that. Uh, it takes four AA batteries and that is not supplied. You have to uh, put in four AA batteries in order to operate this. Again, this unit has Wi-Fi, and that means uh, you can download a free app from Best Garter. Uh, through that app, you can change some of the settings instead of using uh, the buttons and the menu that's built into it. You can change the settings through the app, but more importantly, you could view your photos or videos or the live feed through the Wi-Fi signal. So that makes uh, this unit unique. Uh, over some of the other units here. Uh, this one currently is running $289, and that is the Wi-Fi Digital Night Vision from Best Garter. The last unit we're going to discuss, again, is a monocular. It's advertised as monocular. It means you just view with your one eye. I can't find what the screen size is, but again, it's, it's rather small. And this unit is from AC Poddle. Now, this is the cheapest of all the four that I have listed here, and currently it's selling for $121. This is also the most lightweight unit out of the, all the ones here that I'm comparing. It does have a five power optical lens, and you also can digitally zoom in besides that. Uh, this unit also comes with its own rechargeable battery. It's a lithium ion, it is very small. So again, the AC Poddle uh, is the cheapest of the four options here, coming in at $121 currently. It has that five power optical lens. It comes with its own rechargeable battery, but it's much smaller than the 18650 that's in uh, this unit. So it's the most lightweight and compact, uh, the cheapest. Let's see how they're gonna perform when we put them against each other. We're gonna take them back outside and we're gonna compare them both daytime and nighttime to see how they perform and what they're capable of. So we're gonna start off our testing in the daytime. I have a couple of volunteers over my shoulder. In fact, at 100 yards there, I have a white-tailed deer. It's actually a 3D target of a white-tailed deer. And then out there at 300 yards, I have a mannequin. And he's just simply gonna stand out there and we're gonna take some video during the daytime here. And then more importantly, at night, we're gonna see if the IR will actually illuminate that far and what those objects look like. We're gonna compare each one from this exact same location from this tripod so uh, you'll get a good sense of what the different magnifications look like from each of these units. So let's get the testing. So that concludes the daytime test. We're gonna do this exact same thing at night and see how they perform then. But first, we need it to get dark. Let's try this. That works every time, it amazes me. Well, it's nighttime now, we're gonna do the same test. We're gonna do the 100 yard and the 300 yard test with all four units. Let's fire up the IR and get the testing. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how each of these units performed. It was a little difficult getting the same footage by switching out the units on the tripod, 
but it was from the exact same location and with the same conditions, both daytime and nighttime. I did do one other test that I'm gonna show you, uh, and then I'm gonna break down all this data and put it into more bite-sized pieces. Uh, we should be able to pick a winner in several different categories, and I'm gonna share that with you in just a second. But that one last test that I did, uh, I handheld each of these units and picked out a cell tower that was over five miles away from my location. So I'm gonna show you that sample footage of each of these units uh, shining at night over five miles away. Now, obviously the IR wasn't gonna reach that far, but each of these cameras uh, can pick up if there's a light source of any type. They are very good at picking that up. And obviously you can see that tower from over five miles away. But now let's break this information down. Let's start with the price. Uh, there's no guessing here. Uh, some of the things we're gonna discuss will be open for interpretation. Uh, one person might see it one way, another person another, but the price is exactly what they are at the time of this filming. Uh, as you can see here, AC Pottle wins. Uh, as we list the prices there, it is the cheapest. So if you're simply looking at getting the most affordable night vision, uh, there's your clear winner. Uh, we're gonna talk about it much more because obviously there is more to price. Uh, but the winner for the price, AC Pottle, uh, comes in at the cheapest. Next, we're gonna talk about function. Uh, this has several different categories. We're gonna break it down. Uh, the first we're gonna start with is the daytime. Daytime footage, I would say Creative XP probably is the winner. Uh, you could flip flop and maybe say the best garter. Again, this is where your interpretation would come in. Uh, the best garter might have a little bit better color, a more true representation. Uh, but the top two, I would say, were definitely the Creative XP and the Best Garter. Next, we're going to switch over to the IR at nighttime. Uh, here's where I think it's a little clear. Uh, I felt like the Creative XP won here. An important uh, thing to note is the Creative XP is the only one that you can actually focus uh, the IR beam. You can make it more of a flood light or you could focus it down to more of a pinpoint or a, more of a spotlight. Uh, that was very important because at night, uh, if you put it down into the spotlight mode and really closed in and focused that IR beam, uh, it made this one perform a lot better at night. So I felt like the night distance, the winner was a Creative XP. As you can see in the footage, uh, this AC Pottle definitely had probably the worst video, uh, pretty poor quality. Uh, you can also see that the, the, the soon uh, this model had a 4.3 aspect ratio, uh, made it a perfectly square video. He had the black on the side, uh, so that and set that apart. Wasn't horrible footage from the Dassun, uh, but it has a different aspect ratio. Uh, that's worth noting. Back to the AC Pottle, again, a pretty uh, poor video quality, uh, pretty purplish looking. But as you can see, uh, especially in that cell tower footage, uh, it picks up any type of light very well. Again, keep in mind it was the exact same time of the night and it actually made it look like it wasn't even quite dark yet when I used the AC Pottle. So that's a, a heads up or a big plus for that. It can pick up uh, any type of ambient light, whether it be moonlight or whatever it was picking up. Again, I was standing at the exact same location at the exact same time when I did that type of footage. Uh, the AC Pottle, although pretty poor quality video, definitely showed up uh, as more light or made it look like it was lighter than it actually was. When you compare the size of each of these units, and I actually took the time to weigh each one of them, AC Pottle comes out on top again. So it was uh, the most affordable, and again, it's the most compact out of these. In fact, it came in at 10 ounces, uh, where the heaviest unit was the best garter. It was one pound. 10 ounces. Uh, the other ones fell somewhere in between there. So if you're looking for the lightest, most compact, uh, again, the AC Pottle was the winner there. Turning over to a different category in the function, uh, two of these units have audio included when it takes video. Uh, two of them are completely silent. There's no microphone on them. Uh, the two that have audio are the Best Garter and the Creative XP. So again, uh, those, if you remember back to the best footage, uh, they probably give the best video footage, or at least in my opinion, these two units. Those two units also include audio. So they have microphones uh, and they can pick up pretty decent. Uh, somebody talking or the environment around you. 
Uh, you will have audio in the video with these two. So if you're, that's important, uh, those two would definitely be high on the list. Another thing to note with the function of these, uh, two of these units have a physical IR lens that you have to put on for to capture daytime footage. Again, all four of these units will take color video and photos during the day, uh, but this AC Pottle and the Creative XP on this side, you have to physically uh, put this lens co cover on and off. Uh, these other two units can take color daytime uh, photos and videos, and they have a built-in uh, filter of some sort. You don't have to mess with any other filter. So for a pure convenience standpoint, uh, the Dassun and the Best Guarder would win there. Uh, no external filter that you have to mess with uh, when you're not using this. It sort of just hangs there, putting this on and off. Again, not bad on this AC Pottle, uh, but I found on the Creative XP, one con, uh, both the IR and the camera lens is the exact same size. Uh, it can be difficult remembering even which uh, side to put this on. Uh, so convenience of use with that IR filter uh, goes to the Dassun and the Best Garter. Another category we're going to talk about is indoor use. People often ask if these can be used indoors. Uh, the objective lens, the magnification, can make it a little difficult when you're in tight spaces, but each of these units will work indoors. In fact, I used each of these four inside the studio here. And if you're simply looking at the photo quality for indoor use and being able to focus, I would say the Dassun wins, or at least in that footage, it looked like to me that the Dassun gave the best indoor footage. Uh, each of these units were able to focus uh, and have the focus come down to a small area. So they all worked indoors. Uh, but I felt the Dassun was probably best suited. So if you're looking for indoor use specifically, uh, you might want to check out the Dassun unit. The last category I want to touch on is the, just the screens, uh, the ease of use or the, cr the clearness of the digital displays on each of these. I found that the Creative XP probably has the best screen. To my eyes, it just seemed to be the clear of the four here. Uh, so I would say the winner is the Creative XP if you're simply looking at screen size and screen clarity. One thing to keep in mind for each of the videos I showed, you can physically see better uh, with each of these units than what the video shows. Uh, so if you can't pick out quite the details or the, the outline of different objects or subjects that I showed, uh, you can see better uh, through the actual screen. It just doesn't transfer over quite as well in the video um, when it records it down into that file and I showed you there. Uh, it's a representation of what you can see, but keep in mind you will see slightly better with your own eyes uh, through the screen. One last thing I wanted to touch on was this Wi-Fi model. This is the only unit, the best garter, that offers this Wi-Fi out of these four that I'm comparing. That Wi-Fi option can be pretty nice because you get to use your cell phone. Uh, you can connect directly to this unit. That gives you the ability to view through the unit yourself, and you can have a friend with their Wi-Fi seeing exactly what you're seeing using their smartphone. You can start recording and stop recording uh, through that Wi-Fi on your cell phone. The app's pretty easy to use, and I found uh, it works fairly well. Now, you have to be within uh, probably 40 or 50 feet of this unit, uh, but it gives you a good option to have an accessory viewing screen without physically looking through uh, the small screen that's inside the camera here. You can use your smartphone. So a big winner there if you were looking for a Wi-Fi unit, if that's important that you could share that footage or if you want to use your phone to change the settings instead of going through the menu here on the camera, uh, you might want to check out the best garter of these four. It's the only Wi-Fi option. That's a pretty neat feature. So hopefully you found that information useful. I'm putting links to each of these units uh, down in the description, so feel free to check that out. Uh, like I said at the beginning, hard to pick a clear-cut winner, but you can pick a category that's most important to you and then find a winner that way. It's hard to have one unit uh, cover everything and say it's a clear-cut winner, but when I break it down into different categories and you rank those categories as most important to you, you can find a winner then. 
If you have comments or questions, uh, please put them down in the comments section. There's a good chance that I missed something. Uh, when you try to compile all this information down, it can be quite a job. But again, you can leave your questions down in the comments section. If I miss something, I'll try and get back to you and try and answer that the best I can. I want to thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.